Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this tutorial, I'll demonstrate the basic process of animation and useful tools that you can use inside of Blender. I'll be talking about the four stages of animation, briefly explaining their purpose and significance. And then I'll show you Blender tools that are essential for animation workflow. For this tutorial, I'll be using my own custom rig but you can follow along with any rig that you have, as long as you have control to whatever kinematics you're comfortable with, and I'll provide an example that we can break down together. Our first stage is going to be planning. This is where you prepare the outline of your animation. Gathering references can give you direction when it comes to posing or staging your scene. It's also recommended to make one for yourself for better results. The things you have to consider are your frame rate, film duration, and resolution. I had mistakes in the past where I would change these parameters mid-production, which slowed me down a lot since I would have to make certain adjustments to fit the changes I made. Only make changes when it's absolutely necessary. Having foundation gives you more direction and saves time in the long run. For the example, I'll be using cycles with a frame rate of 60. The duration will be between 6 to 12 seconds, and the aspect ratio will be 2.35 by 1 for a filmic look. I wanted to animate a samurai posing with his katana. So I gathered a bunch of references that can help me understand the stance and posture that they hold when wielding the blade. Our next stage will be blocking. This is where you prepare the timing of each pose and block out key points of your movement. This gives you feedback and make necessary adjustments without overcommitment. I preferably use markers in the timeline so I get the idea of how I want to block out my poses. I then keyframe my poses and set them to constant to prevent interpolations. Once I've done blocking on my poses, we then proceed to the next stage. The splining stage would be the most challenging, since you'd have to refine the keyframe interpolations without losing their timing. Blender's way of handling mosaic curves doesn't help either. Most of the time, you'll have to compensate for it. The graph editor will be your bread and butter in this stage. The normalize also helps you edit the size of the graph. I usually adjust the location and rotation separately. Depending on the purpose of your movement, you'll have to decide to slow in and slow out between the keyframes. When it comes to understanding keyframe interpolations, the basic idea here is to know how the shape of the curve travels in between. If we put a flat stress on the first keyframe, we get a slow out, giving it momentum to speed up. If we put it against the keyframe, we get an acceleration. Every shape has its own purpose, based on the kind of timing you want to achieve. It takes a bit of time to get used to, just play around it to see what works. Finally, we move on to polishing. This stage is where you refine and add more emphasis to your keyframe by implementing anticipation, overlaps, follow-throughs, and arcs. Anticipation is where we prepare the main action by adding preparatory motions. The movement is subtle, but it feels more natural. Overlap and follow-through is where the extended objects have drag during and after the motion by delaying and adding extra movements to the action. It gives it more weight and substance. Arcs is when we apply circular motion to our movements, as it adds fluidity and gives appeal. You can practice by drawing out arcs using the annotation tool, and let the arc guide you through your polish. The arc also complements the anticipation and overlaps. By applying these principles in our example, we get an animation that's smooth and fluid. One tool I highly recommend is the motion path. This tool helps you visualize the spacing between your keyframes in real time. Click the bone you want to focus on and go to data. I recommend using the selected keys for simplicity. Just make sure you have the keyframe selected and then calculate. There's also display settings to customize your liking. Here we can make adjustments more easily with the arc that we drew. And we can comprehend our motion in the 3D space making any adjustments when necessary. Another helpful tool is using constraints. Depending on how creative you can get, 
You can simplify your animation workflow and work faster with the tons of tools Blender has to offer. Being more efficient with your work saves time and energy. With enough practice and commitment, you can create fluid and smooth movements. You just have to spend time learning and diving deeper into film and animation. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one.